I paint in the semi-impressionist style. An artist paints on the first impressions of a scenery or a subject. Some of the challenges that you've had to deal with? Firstly, selling paintings was, was a bit hard, it was a bit difficult. So how did you come up with the name Rowene Work of Art? Well, Rowene Work of Art, Rowene means by the river in Kikuyu language. So when new UN building, and uh, it was in watercolor. So one was supposed to go to him, which he received. The other one was supposed to go to the, the president, at that time was Moi Kibaki. Today I'm at Roslyn Rivera Mall at Rowene Works of Art and I'm here to see some of the most amazing pieces of art done by one man who's very talented. You know, nowadays people are beginning to appreciate art, to want to learn about art, not like a long time ago where art was just a thing, you just draw and do it in school. He does portraits, landscapes, he also features different artists who do paper collage contemporary type of art. So join me as we learn more about the art business. I was brought up to believe that your talent is a gift from God. What you do with it is your gift back to God. My guest for today needs no introduction. He's one of the most well-known artists that we have in Kenya. His work has been featured in the Visual Voices book the 2019 Safaricom calendar and his work has also been featured in different parts of the world. Hi guys, this is Njeri Karume and welcome to the Njeri Karume show where we inform, educate, entertain and keep you updated. So today I'm at Rosalind Rivera Mall at the Rowena Work of Arts to see and hear from the one and only Patrick Kenothia. So Patrick, how are you? Fine. Thanks for having me. Thank you for having us. My name is Patrick Inudia. I'm a visual artist. Uh, I paint in the semi-impressionist style. I paint from uh, my, my uh, art space at the Ros Rowene uh, Works of Art Gallery at the Rosalind Rivera Mall. So how did you come up with the name Rowene Works of Art? Well, Rowene Works of Art, Rowene means by the river in Kikuyu language. So the place the space is in uh, Roslyn Riviera Mall, which is by the Ruaka River. So I named it, I named it after the river, uh, Ruaka River, so I call it Rowene Works of Art. You also mentioned about semi-impressionists. Yes. So could you elaborate or explain to us what is semi-impressionist? Well, before I explain that, I would like to speak about impressionism. Impressionism is an art form whereby an artist paints on the first impressions of a scenery or a subject. So you'd find that in such a style of painting, you find more of color and less of form. Now, the opposite, you could say the opposite of that is realist. Realist, you draw from the form as it is. So because I come from a realist background, where I used to do things as they are, I later moved into Impressionism so that I'm in the middle of realism and Impressionism, so I'm more or less like semi-Impressionist yeah, in persuasion. And how was growing up? Did you want to do art or it just came up when you're in u university? What did you even study in uni? Ah, I, I, yes, I remember as young as six years old, I, was, I always loved art. I was one of the best uh, pupils in school and even in high school. And um, my late dad was a patron of the arts and um, he engaged a Pakistani artist to do murals. He used to do murals for him and also uh, cinema posters. So I came in as, a, on a, as an apprentice for four years where I studied how to, you know, do proportions, mixing of colors, uh, portraiture. Before now, I went on to do my own. I, I went to work for a company called Canon Metalbox. And after that, I went to college, uh, Technical University of Nairobi, where I did graphic design. 
So after I left the company, I went freelance and I've been doing that. As I've been uh, working as an artist ever since. How is the art industry? What are some of the challenges that you've had to deal with? The positive, both positive and the negative. Well, the, it was a bit challenging uh, as an artist because um, firstly selling paintings was, was a bit hard, it was a bit difficult. And uh, we started by, I started by selling my work in gift shops, sometimes for as little as 200 shillings. But then I, I stayed on, I pushed on, and I got to the point where by now I was able to uh, have my own shows and my exhibitions. And after that, uh, it has culminated in me owning an art space at the Rosalind Riviera Mall. It was challenging because sometimes you'd have no sales, and you'd have to live, to live on art was not easy, and it's still not easy to live on art. But by God's grace, uh, I was able to do that over all those years. And how are you able to cope up with COVID especially? Oh, COVID was a difficult time for me. Um, I engaged more into art workshops, training, uh, to supplement income, even to um, pay for the, the art space. Uh, so it was not easy. It was not easy. But, um, but by God's grace, we were able to make it. and. Uh, and I, I know things are going to get better. You've actually sold an art for the former president, Uhuru Moigai Kenyatta, and he also commissioned you to do one for former president of the US, George Bush. Tell us about that story. Oh, yes. Um, I was actually commissioned to do the painting by um, uh, Reverend Teresa Wairimo. She wanted to gift him the painting. And it was a prophetic painting because I was asked to do a lion. Uh, it was a time when he was coming into, he had, he had just become president. And it was a gift to sort of signify that he's a lion, a lion king. It signified that moment, so, so I was asked to do that lion. And later, the president himself, uh, as he was going to, he was going to see the former president of the United States uh, George Bush, to recognize his work with AIDS, uh, the AIDS Foundation. And you know that um, he, he uh, gave uh, or helped for Africa to receive funding, I think in the tune of $15 billion. And uh, so he wanted to appreciate him with a painting. So I did that painting and uh, he presented it to him. And how is it working around the embassies does it help, kind of help? Working around the embassies? Yes, because we see a lot of embassies around. There's the Canadian embassy, the Australian. Well, they, it, they do come to my shows. So what I do is that um, over the years, I've gained contacts with some of them. And I'm able to, when I have a show, I, I invite them. And uh, yes, they, it's quite helpful to have them around. Well, tell us some of the names that you also, because. I could see George uh, Ban Ki-moon, former UN Secretary General, and some of the late politicians, for example. How did you come about that? Oh, yes, I remember we were, um, I went for an interview at the United Nations. We were looking for an artist who would be able to gift uh, the UN Secretary General at that time. He was called Ban Ki-moon. He was uh, coming to open the new office building at the United Nations in Nairobi. So they, they commissioned me, I'm, I passed the interview, and they commissioned me to do six paintings of the, of the UN, new UN building. And uh, it was in watercolor. So one was supposed to go to him, which he received. The other one was supposed to go to the, the president, at that time was Moi Kibaki, and the ministry for, Minister for Environment, John Wichoki. So I believe that they all got their gifts. But I do remember the one of Ban Ki-moon. I was told that he appreciated it very much and he took it to his uh, UN office in New York. Do you offer classes, lessons, or art lessons? Yes, yes, I offer art lessons. I've been doing that quite a lot here. And um, we, have, we had come up with a, an art safaris where we travel to a certain place with a group of, uh, not really students, but people who love art 
who want to incorporate art into their holiday. So we had that. Um, we started with Naivasha, and also we did one in Nanyuki. Yeah, so I do art classes uh, also here in this uh, gallery, um, obviously by invitation. And um, it's been going on quite well. I do have a piece that a masterpiece. Okay, everything that you have is a masterpiece in this gallery. But do you have that one piece that you did and you're like, wow. Yes, I do have. I, although I must say there are many. But um, I remember one that I... There's one that um, I can call my masterpiece. But it's called Belladonna. It was in um, the time when I was doing the red and blue series and that was one of my favorites and it's still, I still have it, I still retained it. What's the most expensive uh, painting you've ever done? <laughs> well, it must be that one of George Bush. How much did it cost? <laughs> I think it cost 385,000. Yeah. And most, most people say your work resembles Timothy Brook. How do you think? It's coincidence, really. <laughs> it's coincidence. Um, Timothy Brook, also, if you look at his artwork, is, a, is an example of uh, Impressionist art. The late Timothy Brook has been in this country for many years, actually. He started painting from the 1960s, I think. And um, you could see he, his work has evolved more into... Yes, his was Impressionist, but his later works were very impressionist. They were more about color, but less about form. And I guess every artist has a, a journey that they take. The work evolves. So it's natural that I follow that progression from being a realist to art that resembles Timothy Brook. Yeah. Do, are there artists that you mentor? Yes, I mentor a couple of artists. Although they don't paint like me, um, what I do is that I accommodate them and uh, I encourage them. And uh, I represent them, as a, we represent them as a gallery. Uh, I would say Kennedy Kinyo is one of them, uh, Derek Monene, Jerry Kinuthia, who went to do her master's in San Diego, San Diego United States. So, and, and a couple of artists that I've met along the way so, yeah, I can't remember all of them, but I know they are there. Mm -hmm. So, if, do you actually have lessons, whether there are people who would want to learn about art, do you offer classes? Yes, I offer classes, um, but we were supposed to do that honestly next year. Right now, this, the, 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 the few months that are remaining in this year, we may not be able to do much because we're involved in uh, uh, exhibitions, but definitely from next year, at least from February, we should have uh, structured art lessons. Yes, so make sure we, you, can, you get into contact with me and we'll arrange that. How often do you have shows? How often I have shows? Maybe um, twice a year. Um, and the rest of the time, we receive uh, clients that uh, visit our gallery and commissions. What would you advise the younger artists or anyone who wants to venture into the art industry? What I'd advise young artists to do is um, continue to draw and paint as much as you can. But uh, there's, art is a very uh, chancy career. So what I advise youth is there's, there are subjects that are associated uh, with art that you can pursue in college. Things like fashion design, architecture, animation, graphic design, uh, interior decoration. So it's okay to pursue these careers while you're still painting. Because the good thing is that when you have an artistic flair, it will help you in your, even in your career. And I always say as an artist, if you get to the point whereby, after having gone to university, pursuing your, your, your career, and then after getting a job, you still want to be an artist, then chances are you are called to be one. And that's my journey myself. I was a graphic uh, designer in an international company, but I chose to be an artist. So at least you have that strength to make that decision, to be a full-time artist. 
artist, but don't stop going to school, don't stop studying, saying that you want to be an artist. It's something I'd like, I advise young people. You can still paint, like what I used to do, I used to, when I, after work I'd paint at night. So I would just stack up the paintings until the time came for me to sell. So store as many paintings as you can, uh, pursue your career, and uh, I believe that if you are an artist, one day you're going to be a major artist. Yeah. So about the, do you have any upcoming shows that you'd want people to attend? Well, yes, uh, we're going to be having a show in this gallery. We're actually planning to do an official launch uh, somewhere late November. And actually we are arranging for that. And uh, we're going to be sending invites. We'd like you to come and view uh, the works we have. We're going to have also other artists. And now uh, we'd also like to engage with other upcoming artists, see how we can work together in the future. Yeah, so follow us up and uh, I'm sure you'll get the invites. And how would someone get you, apart from coming to the gallery? Yes, we're in the, we're in the middle of developing uh, our, our, um, our website. Uh, it's, called, it's going to be called Kinudia Galleries. And um, it's under construction. It should be up and running in the next two weeks. So um, we can engage uh, there and also in Instagram. Uh, yeah, uh, be sure to, to check us out. Um, we can uh, talk and then have you come to our opening show. Thank you so much. I have actually learned a lot about art. Yes. So, yes, and I'll definitely want to know even more and attend the shows to learn about because the arts industry now has grown. Yes, yeah, it's not like it was before yeah. so thank you so much so that's it from me guys thank you so much for watching the show like subscribe share comment and tell us how you think whether you've learned a lot yourselves so this is the Jerry Karume show until next time bye